Hello and welcome. Many people from the retro community still have their beloved joysticks and gamepads from the early days. These devices often live their lives somewhere in the dark corners of our basements and we don't dare to throw them away because of nostalgic reasons. They remind us so much in our childhood where we played our Wing Commanders, X-Wings, Descents and many other games. Those old joysticks were all made to be connected to the game port, usually on a sound card. But in the end of 90s and beginning of 2000s, game ports vanished from our computers and were replaced by USB and our old joysticks disappeared in the past. Today not everybody has a full retro PC and many people are using their modern computers with a DOS box, emulators and virtual machines to play the old games, if needed, with a modern USB joysticks. But wouldn't it be great to play the old games with the same joysticks which we used back then? If you saw my last video about Gravis Analog Pro joystick, you will probably remember that in the end I briefly mentioned this game port adapter which I made. It can be used to connect old game port joystick to an USB port of a modern PC. And in this video it is all about this adapter. Back in the days I was a big fan of the Wing Commander series and about half a year ago I got a feeling that I want to play it again. So I took my digital copy of the game and started it in a DOS box on my modern PC, which I'm using daily. I remembered quite fast that there is no good way to play it without a joystick, so I grabbed my USB gamepad because it has two analog sticks. But to be honest, it was just not the same. I actually don't use this gamepad very often, and maybe it is due to the lack of experience, but for me it turned out to be not playable with that. At the time I realized that I need a real joystick again, so I went online and look what I can get. Incidentally, I stumbled upon the Gravis Analog Pro joystick and thought that it would be cool to get this one again. However, it is a game port joystick and not USB, so I wouldn't be able to use it on my modern PC. Well, not a problem at all. I mean, this is a retro hardware channel. I built so many retro gaming PCs, there are plenty of options, right? Right, I took my Tandy 1000 RSX, installed Wing Commander 2 there and the world was shiny and great again. Until I wanted to play Wing Commander Prophecy. Eventually I was convinced that I want to be able to play this game on my modern PC, but then I needed an USB joystick, so what to do? Well, maybe you remember my PS2 to serial mouse adapter, which I showed in my December 2020 special. There I use an Arduino to convert between different mouse protocols, so I thought, why not go in the same way and convert my analog joystick to a USB? And after some reading and experimenting, I got my first prototype working. It could convert simple analog joystick signals to USB. I will explain technical details a little bit later, but at that moment I was glad that I could use the old Gravis on an USB port to play Wing Commander Prophecy on my PC. So I told about this converter with another user named Creopart from the German DOS Reloaded DE community. And he was very excited about it and encouraged me to make this adapter for another joysticks as well. And since I had no other joysticks at hand, Creopart gratefully donated multiple joysticks to me. A Gravis gamepad, which was even still sealed and completely new. A Microsoft Sidewinder gamepad, also as good as new and completely with original manual and software. And last but not least, the famous Microsoft Sidewinder 3D Pro, also in best condition with original manual, drivers and even with full version of Microsoft Fury 3 game included. At that point I just couldn't stop anymore and so I continued my work on the adapter and added support for all these joysticks. By the way, there are similar adapters out there which you can buy, but they are limited to simple DOS compatible analog joysticks and I wanted to make something more universal and open for other tinkerers. First of all, let's clarify what a game port was in DOS times. A game port is a 15 pin connector which carries plus 5 volts on pin 1, 8 and 9, 4 digital pins 2, 7, 10 and 14 for buttons, 4 analog pins 3, 6, 11 and 13 for access, 2 pins 12 and 15 for MIDI in and output, and last but not least, ground on pin 4 and 5. The digital button pins are low active and are zero when a button is pressed, 
and 1 when a button is released. 0 and 1 are represented by discrete voltage 0 and 5 volts accordingly. The analog pins for access indicate the deflection by continuous values between 0 and 5 volts. Both MIDI pins were used for external synthesizers like Roland Sound Canvas and others. Later in Windows times, the meanings of the pins of a game port could be, well, let's say redefined, and I will come back to it later. But for now, let's stay in those times and see what we had back then. In DOS, the meanings of the pins were hard defined. The joysticks didn't need any special drivers, but also all games were limited to the maximum of 4 buttons and 4 X's. These axes and buttons could be either divided over two joysticks with two buttons and two axes, X and Y each, or could be all integrated into one device, which uh, was usually the case because having only two buttons was quite an annoying limitation in flight simulators and such games. With that knowledge in the head, let's take a look at the adapter now. The hardware behind this is super simple. It is basically an Arduino, which is connected to the pins of the game port. It has four additional 100 kilo ohm pull-down resistors for the access, a dip switch to control some settings, and a socket where an Arduino actually goes into. That's it. No more, no less. All the heavy lifting happens in the software. And before we come to that, let's talk about the Arduino first. It is very important which model to use. The most common and cheapest devices, which are built around 80 mega 328p, like Arduino Nano and others, will not work here. Since we want to convert a game port to USB, we need a device with integrated USB HID feature, which 80 mega 328p doesn't have, but the 80 mega 32u4 does, and so. My choice fell on the Arduino Pro Micro, which is built around that IC. However, should you build one adapter yourself, please pay attention that there are two variants of the Pro Micro. As you can see, the surface-mounted micro-USB connector is not the world's hardest thing to break. So in my first choice, I wanted to get one Pro Micro with a mini-USB port like this one. Unfortunately, as it arrived, I realized that it is much wider than the version with micro USB, and at that time I already ordered the adapter PCBs, and it is not easy to find sockets for the wider version of the Pro Micro. So in the end, I decided to go with the version with micro USB for now. This could be a subject to change in the future, but pinout wise, both adapters are the same, so it's not a big deal. The software is written completely in C++ and is a normal Arduino project, which can be opened and programmed directly from the Arduino IDE. As I already said, all the magic happens actually in the software and I really tried hard to make it as extensible, flexible and though simple as I could. I consider it well documented and easy to read code if you are in C++. It might be a bit more tricky if you are a C programmer or have your roots in other languages, but still I think that it shouldn't be a problem. I didn't use any assembler, C macros or any other wild hacks. I had to implement on class for reading digital input signals though, because the standard Arduino functions were too slow, but I will come back to it a bit later. The whole software is distributed over a handful of driver files and some additional helper code. You can find the source code together with the KiCad files on GitHub. I'll put the link down into the description. Each type of joysticks has its own driver with own specialities, so the best is if I explain each driver and their technical details separately. Simple DOS compatible joysticks with 2 to 4 buttons and 2 to 4 axes were not a big deal. As I told, the very first prototype was written for the Crevice Analog Pro, which is a such simple DOS compatible joystick with up to 4 buttons and 3 axes. As I tested the implementation with different very used old and also unused old stock joysticks, I realized that all of the joysticks have slightly different internal potentiometers. Some were not bad from the beginning, some went bad over the years, but the standard says that the potentiometers has to go from 0 to 100 kilo ohm. I measured all kind of values between 80 and 140 kilo ohm. That results in annoying coordinates offset. This can be solved by recalibration. 
But I noticed that some modern games ignore the operation system's calibration and also don't provide own in-game calibration as well. That made many joysticks simply unusable in such games, because the middle point was always somewhere else, but not in the middle. So I got an idea how this could be solved. It is sufficient to save the position of the joystick during the initialization and use it as the center for all the subsequent position calculations. The outer limits of the axis will be updated on the fly during the joystick movements. As soon as the software recognizes a deflection of the axis from the middle, it updates the maximum and minimum limits and recalculates the position relative to the center. This auto-calibration feature makes it possible that all joysticks will always remain in the center right on start and without the need for additional calibration at the operation system level. This works independent from the condition of the internal potentiometers. The only requirement for this solution is that all of the analog axes must be centered when the joystick is connected. What is usually the case anyway for the most axes when we don't touch them. The only exceptions are wheels, throttle control and such things, so pay attention to center them when connecting the joystick. This auto-calibration feature is shared by all drivers for joysticks with analog axes so far. Thrustmaster was a very famous and high-quality joystick back in the days. Basically, it is the same simple DOS-compatible joystick with four buttons and four axes, where two axes were used for X and Y movements, or pitch and yaw if you want so, and one axis was used for throttle control, and one axis had a special function. The value of this axis was interpreted as a head switch movement. A value below 25% voltage means up, below 50% right, below 75% down, and below 96% left, and 100% of voltage means center. The question was how to test it. I don't have a real Thrustmaster joystick. Here came the donated Microsoft Sidewinder 3D Pro, quite handy. This joystick is really awesome. It can work in multiple modes and can also emulate Thrustmaster and CH Flightstick joysticks. The Sidewinder 3D Pro has a switch on the front where you can select the type of emulated joysticks. This way I could test the Thrustmaster implementation and it works flawlessly. Sure, it is not the real Thrustmaster, but as far as I can see, the emulation is quite precise and everything works as expected. And since the Sidewinder 3D Pro also can emulate CH Flightstick joystick, I took care of this one as well. This joystick is also DOS compatible with four buttons and four axes instead of three, like with Thrustmaster. It has the pitch and yaw, throttle control and rotation. And in addition to that, this joystick also has a head switch. But wait, all available game port pins are already in use. If you remember, a standard game port joystick can have maximum of four buttons and four axes. How does that head switch work? Well, CH Flightstick has another interesting solution. It encodes the head switch movements using the buttons. You see, this joystick doesn't allow to press multiple buttons simultaneously. Every time a user is trying to press multiple buttons, the buttons with a higher ID are shadowed by the ones with a lower ID. For example, if you press the button 0, you can press the buttons 1, 2 and 3 as much as you want, but they will not react. On the other hand, if you press the button 2 and then press, press the button 0, Still keeping your fingers on button 2, you will see how button 0 will light up and shadow button 2. In the same way like you would release it until you release the button 0 again. So for the head switch, the joystick encodes the position as multiple button usage. So the software which supports such a joystick knows if multiple buttons were pressed, then it must be the head switch. When all buttons are reported as pressed, means head switch is in up position. When all buttons are pressed except the second, then it is right. When all buttons are pressed except the third, then it's down. And when only the buttons 0 and 1 are pressed, but 2 or 3 are released, then it's left. All the other combinations would mean center position of the head switch. 
The specialty of the CH flight stick as well as the one of the Thrustmaster are both implemented in the software of the game port adapter and properly mapped to the USB codes. Many people call buttons only joysticks or gamepads as digital. This is kind of right, because a button is either pressed or not. You can't have an analog values in between. However, in this video, by digital, I mean something different. As I already told, a game port contains 15 pins, 8 of which are used for joystick communication. 4 pins are for buttons and carry digital values in sense of on-off, and 4 pins are for analog access, which deliver voltage somewhere between 0 volts and 5 volts. Joystick, which were made in the early days, were using this pinout. They could have maximum of 4 buttons and 4 access and were DOS compatible. And due to analog access signal, such joysticks were called analog. All the joysticks I was talking about in this video so far are analog joysticks. Even this gamepad, despite that it has no analog stick like the others, it still uses the same signaling. Here, when you press the access buttons, it just reports that the axis is completely deflected to the limit, and if you release the button, then the axis are centered. Later in times of Windows 95 and 98, many joysticks were made to be plugged into a game port as well. But they were not limited to 4 buttons and 4 axes. They had a lot more exciting features like head switches and throttle controls, but how did this work? Well, in the time before USB, the manufacturers implemented their drivers to communicate with the joystick via game port using a proprietary communication protocol. For example, by using one pin of the game port as a clock and another one as data. The possibilities were almost limitless. Such joysticks are called digital as well because they are using digital protocols to communicate with the PC. And suddenly, many features were possible, but the price for this feature was the lost compatibility to DOS. You couldn't just plug such a joystick into the game port and expect it to work on the old DOS games. The plug was the same, but the signaling was completely different, so from there on you needed special drivers which would handle the communication between the joystick and the PC. This part is probably a bit too technical for this video, but maybe it is still interesting for some of you. As I told, Sidewinder 3D Pro can emulate Thrustmaster and CH Flight Stick joystick using the switch on the front to select between the types. However, this joystick has more buttons than only the four which are supported by those types of joysticks. This additional four buttons on the base of the Sidewinder 3D Pro are not used in emulation mode. They simply are not working there. So what can we do to use those buttons too? Well, Sidewinder 3D Pro is a very late game port joystick. It was produced in the year 1996, where Windows 95 already took over the gaming market. USB was already incoming and replaced the game port very soon entirely. The reason why Sidewinder 3D Pro supported the emulation modes was the attempt to keep up the compatibility with DOS games which still were quite strong at the time, but since in Windows 95 there were no such four buttons for access limitations, Microsoft introduced the digital side window protocol, which could provide a lot more features than was possible ever before. Let's take a brief look on how it works. Microsoft decided to reuse at least three pins for some side window joysticks more, but for now let's take the simplest case into account. For that purpose, Sidewinder protocol reuses pin 2 for clock, pin 3 for so-called trigger signal, and last but not least pin 7 is used for data. The idea is very simple. The PC sends a trigger signal to the joystick on pin 2, and the joystick sends the data as bunch of 1s and zeros back on pin 7, clocked by the signal on the pin 3. In the data, all the joystick state information like access positions and buttons states are encoded and are usually parsed by the joystick driver on the PC side and represented via a common software interface to the games. This triggering, data reception and more is now completely implemented in the software for this project. However, even if the idea itself sounds simple, the implementation was a bit tricky to be honest. One of the bigger problems were very strict timings. 
It's inside side window joysticks and the data with the clock pulse duration of only 5 microseconds or a frequency of 200 kHz with the other words, which is far too fast for the stock digital read function of an Arduino. I made some measurements on the 16 MHz Pro Micro and found that it needs about 2.3 microseconds to make one digital read. So in 5 microseconds you can pull the signal only twice and you still need some time to make the actual work in between. No way! So I implemented my own function for that which is about 5 times faster and needs only 440 nanoseconds per read which allows to pull the signal at about 2.2 MHz instead of 430 kHz of the stock function. Before I go too deep into it, if you are interested, just take a look at the digital pin H file in the code, which contains the full C++ implementation for reading and writing digital signals. I am quite happy with it and now I have a powerful tool to handle such a high clock frequencies at which a side window throws data at me. Now, where I briefly explain how the Sidewinder protocol basically works, let's talk about the actual Sidewinder 3D Pro joystick. As I told, it can emulate analog joysticks, but can also be switched into digital mode, where all 8 buttons for access and an 8-way head switch can be used. The tricky part is to switch the Sidewinder 3D Pro into a digital mode. There is no physical switch to do that. I needed quite some time to figure out how it works. Therefore, I started the side window source code of the Linux kernel and the Microsoft patent US 5628686A. There you can find the solution on page 19 and 20 and it's not really complicated once you know how it works. You just have to use the trigger on pin 3 of the game port to send a magic sequence of 3 pulses of particular duration. When joystick recognizes such a magic sequence, it will switch into the digital mode and start to communicate using the pro previously described side window protocol. I don't want to get deeper into technical details here, but you can find the corresponding code in the file sidewinder H. The sidewinder gamepad is another example of device which uses the sidewinder protocol. This gamepad works in a similar way like the sidewinder 3D Pro, except it works only in digital mode and doesn't need to be switched into the digital mode first. The data from the gamepad is then transferred to the computer in the same way using trigger, clock and data pins as for 3D Pro. For details, please look into the code. Well, that was quite a lot of theory and background information, but I hope it was at least informative so far. And I promise you from now on it is only about usage of this adapter, which is by the way very simple. First of all, you have to select the type of joystick using these dip switches on the side. The adapter currently supports all kinds of joysticks which I was talking about so far. On the project side you can find a table with all supported joysticks and in this column you can see how the switches has to be set. 0 means off and 1 means on, so if you want to use an analog joystick with two axes and two buttons, just turn all switches off. And for example, for Thrustmaster compatible joystick, turn the first and the third switch on. For all side window joysticks, you have to turn first, second and third switch on. Please notice how the switch is the same for both side window devices, since in digital mode, the adapter just needs to know that the joystick is a side window. Which type exactly it is, the adapter will detect automatically. Such auto detect is of course not possible for non-digital joysticks since there you have only one-way communication and there is no way to distinguish the type somehow. Ok, let's give it a try and connect the Gravis Analog Pro. I'll set up it to analog joystick with two buttons. And here you go, the joystick was detected as two buttons, two axis joystick. And as you see, due to the automatic calibration feature, the joystick is exactly in the middle. No need to recalibrate it, the adapter does the job automatically. Let's switch the setting to two axis four buttons now. By the way, you always have to unplug the adapter from the USB port if you want to change the settings. And here you see the joystick was correctly detected and we have now four buttons. Let's now take the Sidewinder 3D Pro joystick and set it to CH flight stick emulation mode. The adapter has to be switched to CH fly stick as well. Don't forget to set all axes into the center 
also the throttle slider. Let's connect. And as you see, the joystick was detected as six axes, four buttons one. And again, all the axes are auto-adjusted, perfectly centered, and all the axes are working. Also the throttle slider and the head switch. However, notice how the head switch has only four ways, up, down, left, right. This is a limitation of the CH flight sticks, which uh, doesn't allow to go to other directions, like bottom left or top right. Furthermore, we see only four buttons, despite that the joystick has actually eight of them. So, let's switch to side window. As you see, the joystick is now detected as six axis, eight buttons device. And in the test, we can use all eight buttons indeed. Furthermore, the head switch is now usable in all eight directions. Isn't it nice? Now let's connect the last joystick side window gamepad. We don't need to change any dip switches since it is already set to side window and the actual type should be auto detected. And here we go. The gamepad was detected as two axes and 10 buttons joystick. And as you see, all the buttons do work indeed. Well, now all these joysticks will get their second life and can be used again on modern PCs. I developed this adapter on Linux, but I also tested it on Windows 98, Windows XP and Windows 10. At least I didn't notice any problems, but it needs to be tested by more people on different systems and joysticks to consider it stable, I guess. At least on older Windows versions, you maybe will need to install Arduino drivers, which are officially available. On Linux and Windows 10, everything is already included. Just plug it into the USB port and you are good to go. Like everything in the world, also this device has a lot of space for improvements. First of all, I hope that others will contribute even more drivers to this project. Obviously, I don't have all kinds of joysticks which were ever produced for the game port. And even if I would, I'd need a lot of time to get them all tested and running. I mean, I will certainly try to add more joysticks to the list of supported devices, but I really hope for your contributions. As I already told, you can find all the schematics and code open source on GitHub and the link is in the description of this video. Please take a look at it, ask your questions and if you think that you can help, please do so. Our good old joysticks deserve a second chance. On regards of the current implementation, I think it makes a good base so far and I'm quite happy how it turned out. Though. Not everything is perfect, for example that the axes have to be centered when plugging in the joystick, so the automatic calibration can be made is a bit annoying. The joystick itself is uh, usually centered by the tangent anyway, but the sliders can be offset. You can realize it too late and have to readjust the or reconnect the device. This is only related to analog joysticks and not to digital ones like Sidewinder, but anyway, maybe this can be somehow improved in the future. Many people are also concerned about latency, and here is the good news. This adapter adds just a very little delay. On analog joystick, it's less than one millisecond. On Sidewinder, it's below four milliseconds in the worst case, so this adapter is absolutely usable in the fastest action games. And in regards of hardware, there is one thing so far I don't like. The micro USB on the Arduino, which I already mentioned. This could be too fragile, in my opinion, but I already have some ideas how to improve it. So maybe I will introduce an optional design in the future. Maybe it will also have to be changed one day to support another joysticks as well. Well, we will see. And uh, this video already became a little bit long and maybe also too technical. I'm sorry if it was too much, but it is a little bit hard to find a good way of how to explain the background without going too much into the technical details. So please write into the comments if you like such a technical depth or should I try to make it less detailed. To everyone who wants to contribute to the project, you are welcome. And to everyone who just wants to use an old joystick, I hope I could help you with this device. And before you ask, I currently don't sell these adapters, but I am playing with a silly idea to make an online shop where I would be able to offer all the devices I'm making. I'm currently unsure about this idea and would like to know what do you think about it. 
And this is it for today. I had a lot of fun doing this project and I hope you enjoyed this video as well. I'm looking forward for your feedback and so far, thank you and goodbye.